Okay, um, this is the PIDS document, Person Identification Service. This is a, uh, what I'm talking about here is this is a method of, um, I had worked on this project um, kind of after the fact that it had gone downhill. Um, it was called Telemed. It was started by this guy named David Kilman, who I had worked with. And um, th it led to this um, open submission for, um, for a, a method of trying to integrate healthcare informatic systems. This happened 20 years ago. And what he said is he said the private industry went against the government. And he said the people that were pushing it were like for, was like using this excuse that um, it, them using these systems that they were working on was going to prevent them from selling, you know, shelf software like Excel and um, to doctors. And it was really, you know, an example of greed um, getting in the way of, uh, of, of um, pro productivity, of actual progressing, you know, becoming successful. And in the healthcare informatics world, there is no such system in existence. And it's because of private industry's own selfish need to sell and all these hospitals and clinics are full of systems that are basically monopolies. And when they put their money into getting a database to put their patients' health care records in, um, they are faced later on with a kind of a ransomware agenda of the software developer that uh, in order to... Um, in order to get the next level of software, they're going to have to pay more money. And then what usually happens is the clinic will then print out all the records and rekey entry them into another piece of software that they can find that's cheaper than the stuff that they currently have. And they'll keep doing this because all of the systems that are out there are all private industry and there is no, um, there is no, um, there's no standard for connecting them together. And that's what this whole specification was about, was trying to use, um, a, a create a general method of correlating records between institutions. And if we had something like this in place, then we could eliminate some of these, um, some of these um, monopolies that exist inside of uh, the clinics and hospitals. But the reason why these systems are not in place is because the hospitals are private industries. And the way they solve problems is whenever they take over a clinic, they um, try to integrate their database with the stuff they've got on hand. And if they got the same uh, patient records, they create a master patient ID and they give all those records at all the institutions the same, uh, a different set of IDs. And then if two records are the same, they bring them together under that database and for each in, for each you know but if somebody takes over that hospital that took over the clinic they're going to have another pet master patient id on top of that so you've got all these numeric ids which mean absolutely nothing that do not relate in any way to the actual patient and will not just create more bureaucracy in trying to get those records to come together and um, the fact that we don't have anything in place in our healthcare institutions can be proven by the canary in the coal mine that we have to provide all our healthcare information to every single doctor we go to. We have to fill out that set, set of pages of information. If there was a digital system in place that permitted all the healthcare institutions to correlate our records together, there wouldn't be a need for that. And it would, there would be a digital system and it would have uh, different levels of uh, licensing and security and it would have logging of all edits and all access. And um, you would be able to determine um, who had access at what time and if somebody had access to records who shouldn't have access to records, you could litigate against them. 
And so um, HIPAA regulations, what it was really designed for was two things. It was to protect your pr privacy of your health care to get it out of to keep it from getting in the hands of insurance companies that could then use it to um, define the quality of service they could offer you and the premiums you would have to pay. Um, that was to keep them from from getting some idea of your your health care, um, what your health was. If you were, had diabetes, they they shouldn't know that you know. They should only know that you're being that a doctor's taking care of you and the doctor has done certain kinds of blood tests not that you were diabetic or not if they knew you were diabetic then they probably wouldn't offer you insurance um and things of that nature and so that's the reason why HIPAA exists is to keep your health care information from getting in the hands of insurance companies the flip side of HIPAA which is, is not being addressed because there's no steps being made to actually make this work, is to provide secure transmission of, pay, of uh, digital records between institutions um, when you send your records digitally from one institution to another and to have it completely logged and um, to have complete licensing of the, the prep, that you know, have the certification uh, uh, you know, to identify who the who is accessing your record from where, and if you've given them access to your record, and if you if there are systems in place to offer you complete control over your own healthcare record, and if there are ways to cor correlate records at various institutions you went to, um, there's multiple solutions to problems that exist in this that are not in our healthcare institutions because um, the the fear of socializing healthcare. It's my belief that if we socialize healthcare for two years, it wouldn't have to be for it, just two years, we could fix the monopolies in the healthcare informatics inside of these um, hospitals and clinics and actually make them more um, more robust and then put into place a way of look of um, passing records digitally and uh, securely, and then also to allow the government the ability to track pandemics. And what pandemics is, is that you look at the healthcare information sans the identity information. So you don't know whose record it is, but you can see what's happening in their healthcare record and you can determine the percentage of the country that has a certain kind of um, common problem. You know, maybe it's a depletion of certain vitamins. So maybe that's pandemic of something that's occurring with um, synthetic vitamins. Maybe people are drinking too much health drinks and uh, those have synthetic vitamins and it's uh, preventing the absorption of correct vitamins. They may have to go in with the FDA and tell those health uh, drinks to stop providing synthetic vitamins so that people don't have a uh, vitamin deficiencies as a result that's a real world problem and um it i don't know if that's the case but i i took a i drank a lot of health drinks or, or i mean not health drinks but energy drinks that had b12 in them and my doctors found out i had a b12 deficiency and that's my belief as to the reason why that problem exists. But there are other sorts of problems across the board that doctors know about that they could track if they could have digital healthcare records uh, at their fingertips to be able to, you know, they could track pandemics for the government and they could, they could find all your correlated records, your entire records across all the clinics that you've been to and be able to better treat you and, these don't exist. I mean, the systems don't exist for this. There it are. I have seen something like this with websites where you could put your patient information, but that's still not a very secure way of handling your patient information. This is the most secure method, and this was just one of the systems. This is not software. What this is is this is a um, it is an implementation. Um, one 
co company called Care Data Systems. It's the second one on this list. Um, they implemented this, and it, they implemented their own PIDS technology, and it's like a handful of developers that did it. And I was working with them through a guy named da with uh, David Kilman, and David Kilman had started the the need for this because he was in artificial intelligence and he had this bizarre idea of um, treating people using artificial intelligence and using robots. Uh, that was his dream. And in order to attack that, he had to have a digital he healthcare record system and none existed. So that then became his first point of um, his, the first thing he was to attack. And that's what this is, PIDS thing is all about. And this is a specification on the OMG site. That's the object management group. It's not the, oh my God, but it might be, oh my God, there isn't an object management group um, service. And what this um, CORBA is um, the result of lots of experience with um, what CORBA was really designed for uh, and the orbs was designed for was to try to take legacy systems and take any kind of system and create an object-oriented interface to it all. And so that um, things could, could that, you know, where there needed to be protocols, that protocols could be put in place to make systems work together um, without trying to come up with um, a, a unique protocol. They could just use a a um a abstract protocol system and that's what corba is for corba is is basically a language to to um to create interfaces interfacing um methods with objects and objects are just a way of um separating the data from the from the um making software work with um, data through interfaces, uh, which is really what objects are for, is to make it so that the, the software that knows most about the data is working with the data and the software that needs to use the data uh, works with the interface to the data rather than working with the data directly. And that permits you a lot of, of um, it, it permits you to to create better ways of handling the data without affecting the software that needs to use the data um, from another service. And that's all what CORBA and ORBS are about is to create that kind of, that kind of exchange of information. And PIDS was one of these kinds of services that were created w with CORBA and ORBS an orb is uh, basically like a directory service. So if you can imagine a piece of software would go in to a service, uh, to a particular server, like a domain, it would contact an orb and it would ask to see if there were any um, ways of getting certain kinds of data from it. And, it, and the orb would provide to it all the orbs, all, all the um, interfaces to the data that existed at that system. And then they could provide uh, then, then the system on the other end could determine how to connect with that information. Uh, the software developer could develop a, a way of, of, of identifying the various sorts of services that are available and then offer those to the user of the application that's trying to connect to that service. And um, so that's pretty much basically how everything works on the internet. But Corba is at a different level in that it tries to um, simplify things. It makes it kind of complex, but more simplified in that it tries to keep things abstract and um, and use uh, methods of inheritance and all the things that we find in object-oriented programming that permit um, people to um, create better software. And so PID's system pretty much the basics of the PID system was to use um, biometrics, not specific biometrics, but a combination of biometrics, that is um, eye color, um, retina, you know, fingerprints, all, all that stuff, all that identifying information 
to permit you to recognize a person. And uh, I've been, I've even said to people now that even your Facebook friends could be part of your biometric information um, because they're people that you're the only person that really has a friendship with those people that has a certain name. So therefore that could be part of your identity. Tattoos could be part of your identity. And a combination of those things would help to recognize your record from one institution to another. Um, the same way as whenever you do a Google search, you put in a set of words and the right combination of words are going to help find all of the information that you're looking for. Some of it's yours, some of it's not. I mean, some of it's what you're looking for, some of it's not. That's the same idea, but in a different way, it uses um, much better methods of, of matching data by using um, statistics to determine um, what the likelihood of a match there is. And they use something, and Care Data use something called fuzzy logic to do it, but the rate, the way that PIDs identification surface is defined the way you match is not is immaterial to it what is important in the PID system is that you can you can um, correlate records um, that you can identify people using a lot of traits rather than using just a numeric ID or a name or a social security number or just a, a short uh, group of information it puts everything on the table, all kinds of ident identifying information. And then you come up with a method of correlating um, your identification in one place and identification in another place. And then that permits you to bring together your healthcare information from different institutions by helping to determine what your records, by putting out an identification search across the entire network, assuming that there are lots of clinics and, and um, hospitals are all set up. This is the only, the, the, to socialize healthcare would be the only way to fix this problem um, because it would require that all of the institutions in America and in the world use this PID system in order to integrate their databases. And then they, you could put out a search and you could find all of your patient information in every place that you could have ever got tested for anything. And um, if there's HIV information, you don't want to get that information to people. Um, the HIV system would, would just deny that you were there, but it wouldn't even acknowledge that you were there at all. It wouldn't, it wouldn't do it one way or another. It wouldn't give any response. And that's how you deal with, uh, with privacy in terms of certain kinds of healthcare information that could be damaging to a person, even a politician. And so um, there, there's ways to do that. Um, but the thing is, is that what this is all about is, is trying to give people control over their healthcare and also to give um, to keep the information out of the hands of um, insurance companies and to log all access to all records across all institutions, but not to put all your records in one place. You can collect it all into one place, but to keep the records where they are with the institutions that have them. And if you want a mirror copy of it all, then you could bring it all together. Um, but the thing is, is that they have to determine which ones are your records. And they do this by you providing lots of traits of information, blood type, name, address, um, Facebook friends, tattoos, retinal scans, fingerprints. It doesn't have to have all of those things. It can have any of those things. It, the more, the better, the better, the more traits there are, the better the match there is. Okay. And in some cases, there probably won't be anything there, and that's just a record that won't get matched. But um, that will probably require a telephone call and say, you know, I got treated at your clinic. Uh, this is my record. Is this not? And they say, yeah, this is your record. And so um, then you could make, you could have the other the clinic that you're working at make the correlation between those records, and then they would become under the same PIDS uh, identification system. You see, 
And so that's what this system was, what this, um, this is just an interface technology. This isn't software. This is a specification on how to um, create systems that agree on how to um, permit access to, um, to records using identif ways of identifying people. And it doesn't identify on numbers like our social security system works. It identifies people on actual actual physical attributes and informatics and and um, um, and uh, metaphysical, you know, meta. What is it? Metadata, and so data that has to do with the control of data, and so all that stuff. That's what this whole specification is for, and it has all these various sorts of diagrams that are used in object-oriented programming, like uh, this one is a, um, this is an ownership. This is a class ownership um, diagram. The one-to-one -one means that the, that the ID, ID domain, domain has one qualified ID. Um, it's that all qualified IDs have one ID domain, um, but there are zero to many qualified IDs. The, um, Trait type has uh, one to many, so there must be one trait type per ID domain. Uh, so supports one trait type, so you can have a fingerprint, um, but you can have multiple trait types. And then you have the trait value, which is your your data table of um, how to recognize a fingerprint, or how to recognize retinal scan, and then your profile down here is that that um, the trait has one profile, one-to-one -one profile. So there's only one profile for um, the many traits that are available. And there is only one profile to the qualified ID. And so the ID domain, so what this ID domain is, is this is all of the, um, all the people patients record their patients IDs the qualified IDs about this and this little area down here about qualified ID is um, I think that is the um, that's the, the collection of identification or records uh, identify uh, people that this is their way of identifying uh, this is how the system ident identifies them the traits are how they're um, they can be can be matched, and the profile is the actual um, the actual record that has all the traits in it. Okay, so this is what this is. This is a conceptual model of the PID system, and so all you need to do is have a software developer go through this, and he can figure out how the system is to be implemented. And then he has to um, use the um, STL files um, to create the object interface, um, what's called a skeleton, for his software. And then he in, he interacts with that skeleton, and the skeleton uh, creates the software necessary to talk to the orbs, to connect and do the um, do the. Um, interaction with the other servers that have the PIDs information. So this is a complete, this is everything needed to create a, um, an a integration between systems, but they have to use core, but they have to have, have to use IDLs, um, that interface definition language is what IDL stands for. So they have to use Corba, and there are a lot of programmers that hate to use Corba, and we would consider these guys to be um, imbeciles. <laughs> they would be, I, I hate to say it, but they're, they're basically junior coders and they don't understand the need for um, an object-oriented standard of, uh, of an abstraction of interfacing between um, legacy systems and other things in an object-oriented manner, in a standardized manner. They don't understand the need for that and they would rather use something like XML which can be, um, can be, you can pervert 
XML very easily. This is the reason why Microsoft probably supports XML first, is that it's easy to, to, to look into XML data files, but it's not object-oriented method of accessing them. Um, you can pervert a XML standard very easily because the way XML works is that if you recognize a tag, then you can use it. If you don't recognize a tag, then it's ignored. But if some of those tags are necessary for the integration with certain systems, then it can get hijacked. And that's the reason why uh, Netscape um, freed their sources to the Netscape a web browser and what created Firefox is that Netscape was afraid that Microsoft would use the HTML standard to to veer it in the direction of their web browser and they still push it in the direction of their web browser because the way Microsoft works is they prefer people to be dependent on them okay and so look at this HBO and company down here you know HBO, is this the same home box office or is this health health box office? Is it the same HBO company that we know about there? I had heard that CNN was actually involved with this. And so was, um, um, you know, they were using these systems. But um, maybe HBO is working on, was working on this. Maybe they will remember what they were doing when they were working on this stuff. But um, that's... I, I don't know if that's the same HBO company. I think that's probably Health Bureau something or other. But um, the, the PIDs was just one in, uh, area of what they were going to do. They were going to do um, a, a, an, a orb for doing secure transmission of records. They were going to do one for um, the, um, the correlation of... of procedures between countries because each country has a different set of surgical or doctoral procedures and when you take your records and you say you are sick in France and you get your record from America it has to go through a translation process because the the procedures they do in France are different than the one we do in America or they have different names and they need to know what the relationship is they need to have it translated. That's what is the problem with every language is, is that each language has with it a cultural context. And if you don't take into account the cultural context, when you transfer the record over, even if you translate it to their language, if, if it isn't understood what was actually in the record, um, then you might get mistreated. Um, you might not get the proper treatment because they didn't recognize some part of the record that was important to your treatment. And so there was um, a defined uh, some other services. Let me see if I can get back into it and see. I have to go to the OMG group and maybe I can go to OMG. No, it's not going to let me go to OMG. So I go omg.org and do that so this is omg and then you go to um health so you go to health return so healthcare industry and in here you'll find all sorts of stuff in here and uh one of them there's you know they might have healthcare um Specif OMG specifications. I guess I'm I'm there. Um, decision notation services directory clinical decision services common term uh, model A. Uh, so it's probably in here. Um, specifications and but there was let me see there was uh, PIDs. So I go to the PIDs, and then there is some other related um, specifications. They might have those in here too. Um, but PIDs was the one we were working on, or the one he had worked on. 
And if I go back, if I can go back, see where I'm at, it won't let me go up to see all the other. There's some other ones. There's like um, a TQS or, um, let's see, uh, table contents or healthcare. And okay, this is all the stuff. LQS, Lexicon query, query Service. That was one of the things they were working on. And COAS, Clinical Observation Access Service. So COAS was, um, says, um, this model presumes all attendees in the healthcare domain can be modeled positive atomic observations. And so we go to specification and uh, this, uh, see what this one's all about and it'll say it in the it'll say it at the very beginning of the documentation um it talks about corba associated omg documents and then acknowledgements and it, the what this is about Pertaining to founded actual observation treatment of patients distinguished by theoretical basic sciences. Uh, a record obtained the act of recognizing, noting the fact of occurrence of evolving measurement of instruments, judgment. So what this is, the actual clinical record for the patient is what this, um, what this thing handles is the transference of actual healthcare information between institutions and that was what COAS was to be for um, LQS was to be for which I went back there that was supposed to be um, uh, a lexical I think this is the one that was supposed to translate um, the specific attributes of a record between w one language and another and so this, if we go down here and get into the gist of what this was, um, the scope of this spec is specify a set of common read-only methods for content of medical terminology systems. What constitutes a medical terminology system can be very widely from simple lists consisting of a set of codes and phrases, one extreme to a dynamic multi-hierarchical classification categorization scheme at the other. The focus was to determine what could be construed to be common elements of terminology systems. By common, we mean a set of elements in which semantics and fairly widely accepted, even though they may not be present or all in the terminology systems available today. The goal was to produce a specification that could be used to implement reasonable, useful interface to any major mod medical coding schemes. Uh, the key goal of this specification is to provide a single agreed upon ask question terminology. And so the so they really tried to think of everything they could do um, to make the healthcare informatics system um, to try to level the playing field and make it so that all the systems would interoperate. But but the the way that commercial software is is that it tends not to prefer any agreement on anything unless it has to because th when you have to agree to an interface and you have to be constrained to that it prevents you from making money the way a lot of commercial software companies do and that is through proprietary interfaces if this weren't true then um, Microsoft wouldn't be the company they are today because they've always been able to they've always been able to push a a repurchase of their software by implementing a new feature that everybody wants or changing the file format so that everybody has to repurchase the software in order to remain um, to to be able to um, communicate with other people that are using the same uh, software, you see. And um, the solution to that problem is to stop using Microsoft software and start using freeware such as OpenOffice. And if everybody used OpenOffice, then there wouldn't be any uh, reason to just keep repurchasing Word over and over again. Um, 
that's because Microsoft um, makes money off of um, changing the format, uh, changing the language. That's how they work across the board. They change the terminology used when discussing stuff. They'll come up with new languages. They'll come up with new terminologies. They'll come up with new data file formats. They do this all across the board because it, it forces people to hire their people to train um, train the business people. So they, they make money on training you on the new terminology they use in the use, new software. They don't want you using old terminology because they don't want to permit you to use your old skills on the new software. They, they're they're re really not interested in um, creating any consistency across all their software because if they created a, a consistency, then um, people would probably see no reason to advance to the next package. And uh, everybody in the software world knows that you just don't want to become dependent on a commercial software entity. You want, if you're going to use, if you're going to communicate amongst yourselves um, with any kind of software, you want to have a public platform to do it on. And that's what freeware is working in that area is to try to standardize um, public methods of, of interacting. And if the if TCP IP hadn't have been an open um, it hadn't been an open format for the interaction between um, networking technology, there would not be an internet. Um, so you need to um, have an agreement on how to interact, and we need to have this in the healthcare institutions and people will not see the reason for it unless we actually socialize medicine because the commercial uh, institutions have no vested interest in creating this ease of use. They don't, it is not in their interest. So either we socialize medicine or all the doctors put all their monies together, get some software developers and work on a, a, a an implementation of this service and then put it um, into process um, in, in their clinics and their hospitals so that um, and it'll make it a lot easier when one hospital buys up another to integrate their systems. They won't have to be like wasting a lot of time doing the, you know, working with uh, creating a new database that an overarching database that tries to bring all the other databases together that of all the institutions that they've bought up. And so it, it makes that easier, but that that needs to be said so the corporations understand that it's in their best interest to offer um, to to use these kinds of services uh, across the board between between uh, clinics, between hospitals, between countries. You know, we need to have a standardization of a way to integrate, and and if we don't have this, then we can't train. Uh, we can't track pandemics such as the um, the coronavirus, you know, of the present. Um, there's no play. There's no uh, nothing in place right now. I, I'm pretty sure there's nothing in place for them to track pandemics like like um, coronavirus. They can track the testing of of people, but it's not very efficient. It's not instantaneous. They can't know instantly how the whole country stands. They have to call out to all these places. They have to collect it via telephone or via email, but they're not ha having a direct access to the pandemic information. And if, if the people's health care records are in place, the providing pandemic information is fairly easy. You just remove the patient identification information and you take the records and extract them and or you collect the necessary information whatever information is necessary to track the specific pandemics they just go in and check for that stuff and they can determine kind of from a random collection of records and it doesn't matter who and and they don't have to know who it is anyhow they just need to see what the state of the entire country is and they can have AI in place to go and track that information and extract it and determine 
uh, to come up with some formulation of what's going on in the country, what sort of health care problems we've got that we need to deal with on a general level, you know. And if we had that kind of access, we'd be able to provide that kind of service. But we can't because of greed and commer and commercial software. The way that commercial software develops itself is to resist any kind of agreement on uh, on interfacing. So.